Well, hello there and welcome to another Dyer's Review. In this review I will be talking about laning phase, what to do after laning phase, and what to do at certain points of the game. I will also talk about ward placements and other basic stuff. This game wasn't very long, so there won't be a lot to cover, but this is my review. At level 1, you should decide to either solo wraiths or wolves. In this game, Fiddle told me to go solo wolves, so this is what I'm doing. He's kind of playing around with the enemy team, but that's none of your business. Just do your own thing and TP into lane after doing wolf. Now that I've finished wolves, I've TP'd into lane, bought 5 potions and 1 mana pot. You also have the option of buying 4 potions and 1 ward, depending on what is happening level 1. In this game, Fiddle's still screwing around with their blue, so I push the lane and I decide to walk down over there. After walking down here, I realized that there's really, really nothing to do, so I just kind of wasted my time. But I don't lose much because I already pushed in the wave, and GP and Elise were stalled by Fiddle, even though he's level 1. This was beneficial towards me, but it was really weird, and I lost 3 melee creeps. So we're kind of even, but I'm a level ahead, and some CS ahead. In the Darius versus GP matchup, you want to walk up to him every time the creep is low so you can deny him. There are some creeps that you can't deny, but every creep that you deny will slowly increase your lead. You'll notice that I start to walk up aggressively every time my creep gets low, and every time I go for a last hit, I still look for it. Sometimes I even trade CS, but it's fine because I'm in range of getting CS while he isn't. Sometimes it's actually worth it to trade two CS for one, but it's all really, really, really dependent on what happens. In this landing phase, I make a crucial mistake by walking up to last hit GP's barrel and I miss. So GP gets two autos on me for the passive. And then I try to last hit this barrel, so now my landing phase is pretty screwed. Luckily enough, I didn't get ganked at this point, And since I had three potions ticking, I'll eventually heal up. But... Instead of walking to the last hit the barrel, I just try to bait it now, and I just try to adapt because I misplayed. It's at the level 6 power spike in the lane, and this is when you want to start getting good back timers since you don't have potions. Since I see GP backing here, I just push up and back to get a good back buy timer. What this does is it makes GP lose a lot of farm since he's not there, and it allows me to go back to base, get some potions and wards for the next time. It's pointless to stay in lane when you have stuff to buy and you have over 100 gold, so be sure to time your back timers really well. Another thing that happens here is he, not only does he lose those creeps, but the lane is pushing back towards me, so I look to make a TP play bottom since something's happened. Since he TP'd here, he's going to lose a ton of creeps, and I eventually get a double kill here. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we end up making a trade. We end up losing in the end, but GP not only loses the creeps top, but the creeps that are slowly pushing towards me within the next 30 seconds. He does get this farm bottom, but Vayne does not get the farm that's already there, while the creeps are just killing the minions and making them lose some gold. So in, overall, it's evened out, and both globals are now down. After the entire T play, TP play bottom, I walk back into a lane full of tons of minions, Right now, GP only has around 30 to 40 CS, and I'm way ahead. Now, I can still look for a freeze or push up in Rome. Instead of looking for a freeze, I opt to look for a lot of auto attacks so I can sustain using my Doran's Blade and some potions. Right now, he's losing a lot of farm because he, he's trying to harass me instead, and if he walks up, I can potentially kill him depending on how he plays. After having a minor freeze, I run out of potions, so I end up pushing the lane and looking for a roam or a back timer since I'm out of pots. Depending on how much gold I have, I may go back or roam. Right here I find a pink ward. It's really good to b make a habit of walking over here into your tri brush and wherever to see where their jungler is or see where you can put wards. Since I bought phage, ruby crystal, and a pink ward, I can go and place a pink ward right by my red butt brush, so Elise can't gank behind me, and if she ganks in front of me, I'll see from my own trinket ward. I put it here in the wrong order, but it didn't really matter that much since I can 2 versus 1 because Darius is very strong at skirmishing top. 
at this point in the lane, both of us are level 9 and I have enough gold for Black Cleaver. Right here I'm looking for a back timer, but I can also be looking for a kill. So instead of backing here, I just wait around to see if he backed or not. If he, if he stayed, I would try and kill him with my ultimate, and knowing that he doesn't have flash, I'll go for the kill. But if he's not here, I push up. Right here you see me pushing up, and since Gangplank has a really bad buy timer, he loses this wave. Now that I've bought my Black Cleaver and I'm back in lane, since I pushed the wave up before I left, the wave started slow pushing back towards me when I came to lane, so I got more CS than usual. Right now I'm really, really far ahead of, of Gangplank, but since their team is really far ahead, it's really hard for me to capitalize on this. So instead of forcing things, I try to take it slow and try to get, build up small leads as best as I can. Right here my team is in a skirmish and a lot of random things happen, but I can't really follow them that well. And instead I just put out aggressive wards to see where Gangplank is going. After all the skirmishing, Gangplank walks back to lane and uses both of his barrels. Because of this, he doesn't have any bit more barrels, so I can go up and try to go for a kill. This all depends mechanically on how he plays, but he could have lived here if he w didn't greet it for CS or if he flashed earlier. Because he played it mechanically poorly, I punished him and I got a kill for it. Meanwhile, I just push up and then back to base for a good buy timer. After buying, I walk on the way to the lane to see that golems are up. At this point in the game, it's very worth it to do golems when the wave's pushing at you and since there's nothing happening on the map, you don't have to really use your TP anywhere, and also since Darius ult is down, you don't need to look for anything. Therefore, I just did golems for the extra EXP and gold, and I just walked out to get some wards out, and just walked to lane. At this point, I beat GP very easily one on one, but I still need to respect his barrels. At this point, I've been getting most of his barrels, and it's been adding to my CS, so I have a pretty good morale booster. I don't end up freezing here because freezing is very bad when your team has no pressure on the map. Therefore, I will push up and look for plays such as roams or um, anything. But right here, as I was talking five seconds earlier, Vagar walked and cleared up the pink ward, but then my team didn't collapse on them. That's why I was pinging for this and I was pinging a lot. This made me very upset, but what happens happens and now I just have to move on with the game. Because I'm very strong and I've been beating GP really badly, I can pretty much do whatever I want in terms of diving him or roaming. At this point, I decide to dive him because the tower is low. Instead of hitting GP, I hit the tower so the tower won't hit me while, while I try to kill him. But instead, Soraka walks up into melee range and dies. It's very unfortunate and I probably could have done it without her, but it's not always going to go the way you plan. Now I back to see if I can look for a TP play, but unfortunately there's nothing for me to do besides protect the tower, so I just push up and back. Now that I've backed from base, I now have flash coming up and two items. I'm very, very strong right now for uh, this point in the game. Even though my team's kind of weak, I'm looking for a play here because they have low mana. Low mana on Vayne, low mana on Vagar, and decent mana on Blitz. There's around four people here, but I want to look for a play even though Malzahar's bot because I'm very strong and my ult's coming up. Right here I see Vayne trolling, so I flash E in mind of trying to aim for Vagar too, and I go for the kill. Unfortunately she doesn't die and I don't get the reset, but this is a very favorable fight because they have no mana. If they had full mana, flashing in would be a very bad move and we would probably be the ones dying here, but instead we get a couple of kills and we have a pretty good chance of winning the game now. At this point in the game, I walked bottom since uh, the objective is Baron and I have TP up. Generally I should go and get wards around Baron, but we already have one. I was just walking around to see what I can get and I see GP bot. With that in mind, I look to go for the dive and my teammates come to follow. Unfortunately, this is not the right move, but since it's what happened, we just went for it. I should have walked around from the back, but he could have walked forward and stalled us. Therefore, I just took the path that looked the best to me. Right now, even though we're going to probably get this kill, they're constantly pushing top and mid. And since Jinx and Malzahar aren't grouped up together, 
they're in a very, very dangerous position and they need to play safe. Right here, I look for a back and look for a TP, but Malzahar gets caught out and eventually Jinx gets caught out too. Here we're at our last moments in the game and even though we're behind, we still have a chance to win, but the enemy team's going for Baron because they caught us out. With Baron, they'll surely snowball the game unless they throw, so that's why I'm walking in here. Right here, since uh, they're pretty low, I'm looking for a play, but I mess up my flash here and I don't get the kill. Instead, I look for the rest of their team since he backed off and I start fighting Elise here. Since I didn't have flash here because I wasted it, it's going to be a hard fight for me. But since I'm so fed, I have a potential of killing them all. If I did hit that Q there, I probably would have been able to kill them all. And since I didn't, I decided to vote yes because I wasn't mentally prepared to play the rest of this game. Thanks for watching my review. Uh, I'll probably do some more reviews some other time. And goodbye.